Welcome to the Planeswalker Project. One of the new commanders from Amonkhet is Hapatra, the Vizier of Poisons. Unlike most Golgari colored legends, Hapatra strays away from the typical black-green strategy that involves either graveyard shenanigans or making creatures bigger with plus one plus one counters. Far from it, Hapatra actually goes down quite a different route. She and her deck specializes in minus one minus one counters, which weaken a creature and can possibly kill it. Not only that, but as her poisons slowly whittle down your opponent's defenses, she also will be building up an army of creature tokens that are going to have your opponents on the run. Let's take a look at what she can do. So for starters, we're going to want to look at cards that are key to setting her ability off. Since every time we put any number of minus one minus one counters on a creature, we're going to get a death touch one one snake, which we will be wanting to include cards that will put minus one minus one counters on creatures. The Amonkhet block as a whole gave us a lot to work with. Amit Eternal is one of the newest additions, giving itself a counter whenever a player casts a spell. If it hits an opponent, we get to remove all the counters from it. If it gets blocked, they take three damage. Channeler Initiate comes in with three counters and is a mana dork that scales in size as you use it. Bear in mind that the number of counters being placed doesn't quite matter with Hapatra so much as the fact that there are counters being placed on creatures. But this will come into context later with some other cards that we run. Devoted Druid is an older mana dork, but she's an all-star in this deck. If Hapatra is out, we can get a snake at instant speed for some combat trick defense. Dusk Urchins offers us some useful card draw upon it dying. Obelisk Spider, one of the most dangerous creatures in this deck, will ping each opponent whenever we put counters on a creature, and whenever it hits a creature, that one will get a counter as well. Also, like Hapatra, should multiple creatures be getting a counter, each of those creatures will trigger it separately. Wicker Bolt Elder, another older card, can destroy an artifact or enchantment just by paying one green and removing a counter so you can replace the counter with Hapatra later or something like that and keep going. Now for some of the really valuable counter shenanigans that are going to make this deck far more powerful than it might first look. Carnifex Demon comes in with a pair of counters, but for just one black mana and removing one of those counters from him, he can put a minus one minus one counter on each other creature. This gives him so much utility in the form of counter placement and board wipes and giving all the triggers for some of the cards we're going to discuss later on in addition to Hapatra. Midnight Banshee drops a counter on each non-black creature, making sure we will always get some counters placed. Perhaps the most terrifying creature for opponents in this deck is Necroskitter. Your opponents are already going to be on the watch for their creatures dying from your counters. What are they going to do when their dying creatures become ours? And of course, one of the best ways to clean up any unwanted counters burning our creatures is our ever cuddly Quill Spike. This little cutie can go infinite with Devoted Druid, giving us an intensely powerful pupper, an infinite number of minus one minus one counter placements, and those counters will come into play with our next batch of cards. And if there's any need for a wipeout, Black Sun Zenith comes in swinging in this deck, throwing out a bunch of counters, getting back into the deck, and triggering all of our spells. Now for the stuff that wants to have counters placed. We have a few token spawners that'll trigger whenever a minus one minus one counter is placed on something. Flourishing Defenses and Nest of Scarabs both do about the same thing aside from the type of creature they spawn. These two are different from our commander in that they don't just look at there being counters placed, they're also looking at how many counters are placed. So when Hapatra will only give one creature for say, three minus one minus one counters being placed on something, Nest of Scarabs will give you three creatures. Crumbling Ashes won't make your opponents wait for a creature to wither away, all they need is one and they're done. Oh, and by the way, whenever those creatures might die with a counter on them, the Blowfly Infestation will make sure they're not gone to waste. We have a few infinite combos with this as well. We also run one of my favorite Phyrexian toys, the Contagion Engine, to make sure that we have full control over our opponent's fate. Double Proliferate can turn just one minus one minus one counter on a creature into three, wiping out most of the smaller creatures. Not to mention the ones being placed as the engine hits the field. Speaking of the Phyrexians, they also bring with them the power of the Glistening Oil, which gives Infect, which is pretty good in this deck, but continuously placing counters on a creature until it dies makes this a very potent, reusable removal spell. Now then, we've begun to amass an army, and you know we need to include spells that are going to make some effective use with going wide with creatures. One of the best synergies I find in this deck, especially when you have a deck that has a lot of creatures in it, is Cryptolithrite 
and Throne of the God Pharaoh. The former lets you tap all of your creatures for mana, which can put you from having 5 mana to 50 very easily with this deck. The latter is a newcomer I find is almost a staple for token decks, burning each opponent for the size of your tapped out board. Just having 10 creatures, which isn't even hard in a deck like this, will take out a quarter of each opponent's life. Each. Slate of Ancestry can give you more card draw than you'll ever know what to do with, and while this deck isn't quite a stacks deck, I do like to run Smokestack to throw opponents boards off, forcing them to sacrifice their precious permanence while we sack a token or two. One card I want to talk about that I feel like some players of Apatra might want to run is Doubling Season. While I'm all for saying that it would work great in this deck, certain cards might be negatively affected by doubling season being in play, giving them double the minus one minus one counters and maybe killing them off before I get to use them right, that I personally don't run it in my build. I'm currently testing it though to see how it scales for me before I make a final judgement on it being included or not. We run a couple of tutors to ensure that we get our key creatures when we need them. Since we are a very heavy creature deck, we do have a lot of cards that will just seek out our creatures. Evolutionary Leap is nice to trade in a snake or an insect to search for a creature. Birthing Pod is an absolute threat to opponents as we can easily work our way up to cheating in some of our biggest cards. Demonic Tutor is the only black tutor I choose to run as I like to keep most of my spells as cheap as I can and Diabolic Tutor really doesn't give me the same comeback. Green Sun Zenith and Court of Calling will round out our nice little tutor suite to help us snag up our creatures. Now for the mana base. This is actually a deck that I feel that the mana base deserves extra attention as we're going to want to get Hapatra out on turn 2 as often as possible. The later that you cast her, the less she'll be able to function as a creature swinging in and getting those triggers and the more she becomes an enchantment. Earlier on in the game, because most players might not have too much on their boards, it's very likely you'll be able to swing in at one player turn 3 unblocked and be able to begin growing your board. So I include a number of dual lands like Overgrown Tomb, Lanoir Wastes, Hissing Quagmire, Temple of Malady, the Vivid Lands, and Woodland Cemetery. We run some value lands like Bajuka Bog to eliminate any graveyard that we feel is a potential threat. The Scarab God is very real and will want to eternalize a powerful creature, so we'll beat him to the punch by getting rid of the graveyard. Grim Backwoods lets us trade in a creature for a card draw which given the sheer number of creatures we can spawn shouldn't be much of a drawback. Rogue's Passage might as well say Hapatra's entrance only as this will ensure she'll hit opponents without the fear of blocks so we can get her triggers. Springjack Pasture is pretty neat, gives us a token and we can use them later for some life gain and mana ramp. I also think my friend Pete, the guy who got me into Commander, beat me with a herd of goats once. Anyway, that's going to do it for our look at Hapatra the Vizier of Poison. She's by far my favorite commander out of Amonkhet and quite possibly my new favorite token general, I'm sorry Riss. I really love how resilient she is to removal and how quickly she can swamp the board after a wipe. A lot of tokens will fold to a wrath, and given that we can simply just knock out a few more tokens with a few spells, we can quickly re-swamp the board. Get it? Swamp? Green and black? Get it? Swamp? Anyway, what do you think of Apatra? Are there any cards that you like to use in her deck? Are you interested in building her? We're going to include a link to the tapped out list for her using the full deck list that we cover in this video, even the cards we didn't discuss. Remember to like and share this video with your commander playgroup, your friends, family, your pet snake, and maybe we'll cover some more commanders from Amonkhet. I hope you enjoyed this commander video, and as always, we'll see you at the beginning of the next upkeep.